presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Wallace Beery and Margaret O'Brien in Bad Bascom. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Like the famous buccaneers of yesterday who prowled the high seas in the days of sail, the American outlaws who roamed the plains and deserts of our early West are among history's most colorful legends. Tonight, we bring you a typical saga of that period in Metro-Golden-Mare's punch-packed screen hit, Bad Bastion, with its two original players in roles ideally suited to their unique talents, Wallace Beery and Margaret O'Brien, the latter America's best-beloved little star, and incidentally, my favorite croquet partner. Not long ago, Margaret and I played a match at Palm Springs, opposite two of Hollywood's best-known screen stars, which is another way of saying opposite two of Hollywood's loveliest luxe complexions. And I might say that Margaret not only was their equal at croquet, she was also their match when it came to charm and beauty, which is another tribute to a great little star and a great Lux soap fan. It's playtime now, and here's Act One of Bad Bastion, starring Wallace Beery in the title role and Margaret O'Brien as Emmy. <laughs> The war between the states is over, but there's no peace beyond the Rockies. Banditry rules the land. Finally, in answer to a series of desperate pleas, the federal government dispatches an agent to Timber City, Wyoming, a man named Fulton. I've been sent here for just one purpose, gentlemen, to capture Bad Bascom and his gang. Well, we got him holed up here in Wyoming, and we want him caught. And we should have come a few days earlier. He just about took this town apart last week. I understand you almost captured him. He's almost been captured a dozen times. Well, you did more damage to Bascom and his outlaws than you think. The gang is split up. Well, we're up. We're up. It's going to be harder running them down, but we're still going to try. How? You don't know anything about him? More than you think, Mr. Ames. Take Yancey, for instance. Well, who's Yancey? Bascom's sidekick, Renegade White. Used to live with the Indians. Joined up with Bascom a few years ago. What about Bascom? Nobody here even knows what he looks like. We know this much about Bascom. We know he's left-handed. We know he's got a rope burn on the back of his neck. A rope burn? He was strung up once for cattle rustling, but his gang cut him down before the job could be finished. Now, here's my Mr. plan. Mr. We... Mr. Fulton, sir. Oh, come in, Sergeant. Mr. Fulton, the ranch at Middle of Wells City saw him last night. Ask him and Yancey alone. They were heading due east. Due east, huh? Yes, sir. You soldiers learn anything else? Yes, sir. We found a body near Sentinel Rock, an old man. Go on. Shot in the back, sir. We brought the body back at the town, but there ain't no one here seems to know who he is. <laughs> I still say you shouldn't have shot him, Yancey. That old man wouldn't have done nothing. He won't do nothing now, that's certain. Who did he say he was? George McKay. Belongs to Mormon caravan heading for Utah. What are you so jumpy about, Baskin? I ain't jumpy about nothing. I told Johnson at Mineral Wells to tell him we was heading east, didn't I? And we're going west, ain't we? Only I don't... Only what? Only the next time I want any shooting done, I'll give the order. Uh, you're just worried about Jimmy. Yeah, well, I wish I knew what happened to that kid. You, you're sure you seen him get away after the Timber City raid? He got hit bad, but he got away. You ask me, we're better off without that. Pass him. What's the matter? Down on the valley, look. That dust cloud. Wagon train, huh? Oh, that's that Mormon caravan that old man was telling us about. You ain't thinking I'm going down there. Where would be the last place that federal man would look for us? That Fulton fellow. In a Mormon caravan. Hey, maybe you're right. You hang on to my coattails, Yancey. You and me is about to be converted. These two men just rode up, Brother Walker. Said they wanted to see you. Well, brother? My name is Smith. Brother Walker, Ezekiel Smith. This here is Brother Jonathan Briggs. We, we come with sad news, folks. Brother McCabe, why... He passed on. What happened? Well, we, we met up with him yesterday, me and Jonathan. He was looking for converts. Just about then, a lot of them outlaws jumped on us. There must have been about 40 of them. They killed Brother McCabe. Oh, why couldn't it have been one of us in place of that good old man? Brother Ezekiel and me, us being such peaceful men, wasn't a thing we could do. Save to bury him, and I, I put a little bunch of wildflowers on his mound. Thank you, brother. The very last word he said to us was, 
Tell Brother Walker to carry on the good work, and we'll all meet above. Amen. We're very grateful, brother. And you're welcome to join us, if you have a mind to. Thank you, sir. It's our bounden duty, sir, Jonathan and me. We got so much happiness out of the elder just reading to us out of the good book. Come, brother. You can meet the rest of us now. Well, that was pretty fair fiddles, Brother Walker. What's next? We gather around the campfire, Ezekiel, with songs and prayers. No, no, I, I mean what's next to eat. I'm sorry, Ezekiel, but that's all. Oh, well, if uh, you and Jonathan will excuse me, I, I feel the need to meditate. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'll see you at the prayer meeting, Jonathan. Hey, mister, that's our provision wagon. Thou shalt not steal. Huh? Thou shalt not steal. That's the eighth commandment. Thou shalt not snitch. That's the ninth commandment. I saw you steal that ham. Where'd you come from? From that other wagon. I'm supposed to be asleep. Now, ain't you ashamed? Running around in your nighty. You should be ashamed. You ain't very polite, either. When I'm hungry, I ain't ever polite. Well, I'm hungry, too. I got put to bed because I was S-I-C-K. Look at my tongue. Stick your tongue back where it belongs. I ain't interested. I can yell awful loud. No, 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 no. Here, here. Here's a hunk of ham. Stuff your jabbering mouth. Thanks. Think your ma would bring you up better. Where's your ma? He ain't here. Now, well, where's your pa? He ain't here either. Well, why ain't they? According to Grandma, when I was a little girl, they went away. Oh. Oh, well, well. Uh, here, have another hunk of ham. Thank you. Where is your grandma? In the wagon. She shall be S T R I T. Uh, I'll speak English. What does D-A-R-L-I-N-G spell? That, that, well, well, I ain't going to tell you. I've got to find out, because that's what Grandma told Brother Walker I was. She's always calling me names. What's your name? That, I, I mean, Ezekiel. With a Z? Yeah, with a Z. <laughs> What's your name? Emmy. With an M, huh? <laughs> You're funny. Maybe I'll like you. Well, don't put yourself out any. Emmy! Emmy! Emmy, where are you? Just getting a drink of water, Grandma. I'm coming. I'll see you in the morning. Go on, beat it. You you draw flies. And this brother Ezekiel? This is Sister Abby Hank. I've assigned you to her way. Huh? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's Brother Jonathan? You can assign him to her wagon. Brother Jonathan's already been took. Tilly and Lucy Lovejoy grabbed him before I got here. You see, brother, the men do the heavy work for the women they have blessed in marriage. Oh, then, this one here ain't been blessed yet, huh? I've been blessed twice, but they both passed on. My wagon's back yonder, now get. I ain't getting nowhere. Oh, good morning, Mr. Did you get him, Grandma? Did you? Well, not judging by his last remark, honey. I know something, I won't T-E-L-L. I do start secret in the peanut, S-H-E-L-L. What are you yapping about? Oh, nothing. Just something I saw last night. La oh, but, well, uh, yeah, la well, yeah, sure. Uh, don't tell me, sister, that this here is your little granddaughter. Well, who do you think she is? Well, gosh, now, that's different. How could I refuse anyone as sweet as she is? I thought you'd come. Well, just don't stand here. There's our oxen to be hitched up. Ain't you glad you picked up, Mrs. Gill? No, sure. I'm so happy I'm set to bust. Here's the milk, Miss Abby. I, I suppose you'd like me to churn it for you, too. Well, just hang the bucket on your lower lip, and we'll have butter in no time. Oh, Grandma, come quick. Why, well, Emmy, what is it? The scouts, they burn in the wounded man. Oh, Lord of mercy, what next? What scouts? Our scouts, of course. They travel ahead of the wagon train. Oh, our scouts. Well, tell them to holler if there's something I can do. What's the matter, Bastion? Not interested in seeing who the wounded man is? Oh, I'm resting, Yancey. The way that old battle axe drives me to work. Well, I, I saw him. It's the kid, Bascom. It's Jimmy. Jimmy? I found him at a water hole, unconscious. Looks like he'll pull through, though. Oh, gosh, that's fine, the poor kid. Poor kid? What about us? He'll recognize us. Won't he talk? Jimmy won't talk. Wait till he's alone, Yancey. Then you and me is paying a visit to a sick friend. <laughs> Yancey. Gosh, 
Gosh, I'm glad to see you, Jimmy. What are you two doing here? They told me this was a Mormon immigrant train. That's right, Jimmy. We broke up after the raid on Timber City, kid. After you got shot. I'm glad I got shot. Put some sense into me. Why, I ever joined up with you murdering rats. Now, and... now, take it easy, son. I'm Ezekiel Smith, see? And Yancey here is Jonathan Briggs. Don't say nothing to spoil it. Just remember, you've never seen us before. You were shot down by Indians. I'm not afraid of the law. I never killed anyone. Yeah, but you're going to have an awful hard time explaining that. After all, you're a member of the Bascom gang, and that's all they want to know. Get out of here. Sure, Jimmy, sure. Get going, Yancey. Hey, you, Bascom. How many times have I got to tell you my name is Ezekiel Smith and you're Jonathan Briggs? Now, what do you want, brother? Gathering yeah, firewood for an old lady. How much longer are you going to put up with this? Till I feel it's safe enough to light out. Still worried about Jimmy, huh? No, Jimmy's getting on fine. Did you see him today? Back in the saddle, fit as ever. Except he's going awful sweet on that Dora girl, Walker's daughter. Well, that's his business. And getting out of here is our business. We've had three weeks of this. I need action. I need cash. You never heard of me turning down any, did you? The Shoney Pass ain't far off. We could cut out of here tonight. Yeah? Ever hear of a federal name? Fulton? He's lost in his own dust by now. Tell you what you can do, Brother Jonathan. Right after dark, why, you come here to this patch of woods, see? Bring a couple of horses and wait for me. Suppose you decide you ain't leaving. Well, any time you don't like the way I'm running things, why, you can cut out on your own, see? Yeah, maybe I will. Hello, Zeke. Oh, hello. You going to build a fire? No, I ain't. Grandma said you was. And your grandma's going to get an awful joke. I'm tired and that's all there is to it. I'm plumb worn out. You could sweet talk a Zeke if you knew how. In her it would curdle. Now give me that blanket. I bet you could handle her. I bet you could handle a hundred engines even. Oh, sure, yeah, five hundred. What do you want the blanket for? Oh, I'm just going to shake out the moths. I don't see any moths. Of course you don't. That's because they laid their eggs and flew away. Do moths lay E-G-G-S? E-G-G-S. Sure they do, and they, and they lay eggs, too. Then why don't they cackle? Oh, I don't know. Now go on and get out of here, scatter. Where should I go, Zeke? Is this far enough away? No, but I'm thankful for small blessings. Just stay there. It's at the same time where I am as it is where you are. Where in tarnation do you get all them questions? When we cross the Mississippi River, it was 12 o'clock on one side and 11 o'clock on the other why, Jackie? Well, it's, uh, it's just a trick to get you to set your stomach back an hour so you won't eat so much. If you set your stomach back, can you set your heart back an hour, too? No, I suppose so. I don't know. I don't know. Does a heart have hands like a clock, Ezekiel? Well, how's it going to pump blood if it ain't got hands on it? Oh, is that what the heart does? Oh, it says the heart's to love with. Zeke, do you love me? No, no, I don't love nobody. I love you. I'll be awful pretty some day, Zeke. You'll be graduated. All right, Emmy, all right. I'll be glad I waited. Now, where's my bridal? You won't go and marry someone else. Promise? No, I'll give you my word on it, yeah. What do you want the bridal for, Zeke? I told Jimmy I'd loan it to him. Now I gotta go find him. Just look for Dorothy, and you'll find Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Well, that's it, Baskin. You and Yancey are pulling out tonight, eh? Well, I'm staying. Sure, Jimmy. You stay now. You wasn't cut out for my sort of life anyway. When are you leaving? As soon as they start that their prayer meeting and singing, Yancey's coming over there by that piece of wood. Oh, no, he's not. Those two old maids are fussing over him in that wagon. They say he's sick. Oh, Yancey ain't no sicker than I am. Well, then you better go and pry him loose from those lovejoy sisters. Yeah, I will, Jimmy. And, and good luck, son. You, uh... You won't have to worry about me, Bascom. As far as I'm concerned, I never even heard of you or Yancey. Thanks, son. And look who's come to see you, Jonathan. Brother Ezekiel. Poor Jonathan. He's ailing again. I ain't ailing. You get away from me. Now, 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 now. Just put this down. Some nice hot broth. <laughs> I'll get you some cookies. And I'll get you some jam. Poor, poor man. How do you expect to make a getaway? You can't even get away from them old hands. Well, what am I going to do? Leave it to me. Oh, uh, Sister Tilly. Yes, brother? Oh, I sure hate to do this, but Brother Walker, 
He sent me here to fetch Brother Jonathan. Oh, he'll catch more cold in his back. Lucy, dear, will you get his shawl? I don't want no shawl. Now, now, Brother Jonathan, you do exactly what Sister Tilly says. She's always right. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I can't seem to find it, Tilly. So when I'll get it, Lucy. Here's your chance, Yancey. Vamoose, get them horses and wait for me in the woods. I couldn't find the shawl, Jonathan, but the here comforter with... Why, where'd he go? Jonathan! I guess he had to hustle, sister. Brother Walker's rotten to see him so bad. Oh, dear, his poor, poor back. Uh, Jonathan's a very sick man. What he really needs is hospital care. Yes. Oh, I wish we had ours, dear. Hospital? You figuring on building a hospital? Oh, well, not just us. Our a whole party's contributing to its construction. A big one. The best that money can buy. Well, that, that would take heaps of gold. Surely, sister, you ain't carrying that much gold with you. Well, not us a personal, but it's in the wagon train, all right. Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand dollars? Gosh, well, well, I guess I gotta get along with my chores. And you tell Brother Jonathan to come straight back, won't you? Oh, I'll bring him back myself. After all, with fifteen, I mean, with a pottle of, uh, uh, a kettle of, uh, hot broth waiting for him, uh, he wouldn't think of not coming back. <laughs> Ezekiel, you come right here. Oh, now, Sister Abby. You might have known I'd find you lallygagging. You want to be late? Late for what? I, I got to go find Jonathan. The singing, or are you deep? Well, I got to milk my head of all. Oh, Jonathan. He's been milked. Well, I got to tether the oxen. Well, they've been tethered. Mm, well, I got to bring in the wood. Oh, Jonathan. It's all dropping. Grandma thinks of everything. He doesn't see you. Now, you keep quiet. Now, look, Sister Abby, I ain't got no more singing in me than a mule has. Well, just keep your heels on the ground and nobody will notice. Now, come on. <laughs> now then, folks, is anyone a favorite hymn they'd like to sing? Yes, Brother Walker, I... I sure have. What him, Brother Ezekiel? Well, eh, eh, ain't there a song called Stop or Come Out of the Woods or something? I know, Mr. Walker. I know the one he means. Well, Emmy? Hmm. Wait, wait, brother, for you plunge in the darkness. Uh, wait, wait. You, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good enough for me, Brother Walker. All right, folks. We'll sing you. If you wait, wait, brother, for you plunge in the darkness. Well, you asked for it, you big lummox. Ain't you going to sing it? Oh, who, me? Oh, sure, Abby, sure. <clears throat> wait, wait, brother, wash your soul of sin. <clears throat> wait, wait, brother, we're the devil. Wait, wait, brother, wash your soul of sin. Wait, wait. Well, that was fine, folks. Just fine. Ezekiel, I must say you're the most enthusiastic singer we've ever had. Why, look, even Brother Jonathan is joining us. Welcome, Brother. Yeah. What's going on here, Zeke? Just linger and listen, Jonathan. Brother Walker, do you mind if I sort of open my heart to all these good people? Why, I wish you would, Brother. Thank you. You too, Brother Jonathan. I got a message, and my message is this. If I was a man that cared anything about money, I'd say that that song done me just as much good as finding a pot of gold right here underneath my nose. And I might say that tonight is the answer to all I've been looking for. I ain't much at words, but I, I hope you folks know what I'm talking about. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Well, folks, that's all for tonight. Back to your wagons now. Pastor, are you crazy? What's all this about gold? Fifteen thousand dollars here in this wagon train. How'd you find out? Those two old antiques of yours told me. Oh, hello, Jimmy. I thought you were moving out. Well, Jimmy, I don't know. All of a sudden, I figure my place is here, son. Well, just don't try anything. What do you mean, son? You know what I mean. Just don't. That's all. Don't pay any attention to him, Yancey. We'll find that gold if we got to turn every one of these wagons inside out. In 
a moment, our stars will return with Act Two of Bad Baston. Meanwhile, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. Why that faraway look in your eye, Libby? Oh, I've been in another world all afternoon, Miss Keeley. Adventure, intrigue, romance. A touch of spring fever, perhaps. <laughs> Wrong guess, Mr. Keeley. I've just come from a preview of Eagle Lion's new picture, Adventures of Casanova. Oh, now I understand. The story of history's great lover. The picture that was filmed in picturesque Mexico. With handsome Arturo de Cordova in the title role. Turan Bay plays another dashing adventurer. And lovely Lucille Bremer is the girl. I hear that the sets and costumes for Adventures of Casanova are unusually beautiful. Well, lavish is the word, Mr. Keery. Especially Lucille Bremer's costumes. Some of them are authentic copies of those worn by the romantic Empress Carlotta. Lucille has just the type of beauty to set off such dramatic gowns. Have you seen her in her latest role, John Kennedy? No, not yet, but uh, I'm making a date right now. She's really exquisite. I want to see that lovely complexion of hers in the close-up. Well, of course, you know, Lucille Bremer is a luxe girl. Her fresh, radiant complexion is one of her outstanding charms. She's wise to protect her skin with this famous beauty soap. Nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap, you know. For complexion care and for bath, too. Incidentally, that big bath-sized Lux Toilet Soap is making a hit with the screen stars. Women everywhere say they're delighted with the new bath-sized cake. They enjoy its rich, creamy lather. And the delightful perfume that leaves such a lovely, clinging fragrance on the skin. Ladies, if you haven't tried the new bath-sized Lux Toilet Soap, why not get some tomorrow? Look for it in the familiar sampler wrapper. Hollywood's own beauty soap, Lux Toilet Soap, in the generous new bath size. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. We continue with Act Two of Bad Bastion, starring Wallace Beery as Bascom and Margaret O'Brien as Emmy. For two days, Bad Bascom and Yancey have searched the wagon train for the gold. Thus far, unsuccessfully. Now, while the caravan pauses for the noonday meal, a group of horsemen enters the encampment, headed by the federal agent, Mr. Fulton. I'm a federal officer from Washington, Mr. Walker. You see anybody riding past here today? Why, no, Mr. Fulton. Looking for someone? The remains of the Bascom gang. Bascom gang? In these parts? We trailed them to Shoshone Pass. Caught most of them last night, but Bascom himself is still on the loose. You ought to tell Zeke. He'll catch him. Oh, excuse me for interrupting. Oh, that's all right, little girl. Who's Zeke? One of your scouts? No, he's one of our converts. But come to think of it, Ezekiel had a brush with a gang of bandits some weeks ago. They uh, killed one of our partners. Is that so? I'd like to talk to him. You wait here. I'll get him. I'm awfully sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Fulton, but when little Emmy come for me, why... I was right in the middle of my noonday prayers. Uh, Mr. Fulton's on the trail of uh, Bad Bascom, brother. Who? Bascom. Oh. Heads up a gang. Probably the same bunch you had the brush with. Did you get a good look at any of them? Oh, I hate to confess it, sir, but I hightailed it out of there just as quick as I could. But, Zeke, you ain't afraid of nobody. Tell them about the 500 Indians. Oh, now, now, child. <laughs> Uh, there was one fellow in that gang. He seemed to be sort of a leader. Notice anything peculiar about him? Well, yes. Uh, he uh, had a scar on the left side of his face. His face, huh? I only knew about the rope burn on the back of his neck. Anything else you noticed about him? Yes, sir. He he was left-handed, just like I am. You'll notice I'm carrying the scriptures in my left hand, sir. Oh, I trust you'll capture him, sir. You, you know something? I bet the bad bastard was the one who shot Jimmy, too. Jimmy? Who's Jimmy? Oh, uh, that, that's me, son. Oh, come here, son. When were you shot? Who did it? Uh, some weeks ago, sir, but uh, it, it was Indian, sir. Oh. Well, good luck with your trip. All right, men. Let's go. Hey, Jimmy, come here. Well... Thanks for this morning, Jimmy, telling Fulton it was Indian. Look, I thought you and Yancey were pulling out two nights ago. We'll be pulling out soon, Jimmy, soon. I've, uh, I've changed my mind. I'll go with you. But I, I thought you was getting awful sweet on that there Dora girl. Well, just leave her out of it. You told me once I couldn't leave the gang, and you're right. No, no, Jimmy, you, 
You ain't really one of us, and I, I'm i kind of glad. No use. The more I see a door, the more I know I've got no right to Now, it. cut that out. You're staying right here with this wagon train. Well, just you let me know when you're leaving. What he wants. What's come of us, Yancey, but I ain't going to let him. Now, what about that gold? We poke our nose into every wagon. If we keep it up, even these dumb heads are bound to get suspicious. Well, I, I got an idea. A few hours born, we'll reach the river. What about it? If they cross that river, they'll have to take everything out of the wagons to dry, won't they? So that's when we'll see where the gold is. Oh, they're just fine, except Walker said they ain't going to cross the river. This is your home territory, ain't it, Yancey? This is where you used to live out with them engines. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, you get up in them hills right away. Find them engine friends of yours and tell them this wagon train has come to take their land away. There's the river, friends. Water your stock and fill your water barrels. Are we crossing the river, Brother Walker? No, we'll stay on this side and follow itself. Uh, excuse me, Brother Walker, but it appears somebody else has got a different idea. Look up there at that there mountain peak. Indian smoke. It's making a fire. Now, yeah, what does it mean? Well, I've been scouting this territory for years, Brother Walker. That smoke means a war council. You mean, are they going to scalp with me? Oh, no, no. Why, even if there was a thousand of them, Mammy, I'd, I'd protect you and your grandma. Any time you want to protect me, there's something wrong. Looks like we got across that river. And I don't know. Indians couldn't be much worse than bucking that current. Depends upon what you'd rather have in your shirt tail, brother. A little water or an Indian arrow. I wouldn't want it on my conscience, Brother Walker, driving these women and children into Indian territory. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, get ready, everyone. We'll cross the river. And we thank thee, Almighty Father, for guiding us all safely across the treacherous waters. We thank thee especially for Brother Ezekiel Smith, who risked his own life to save little Emmy and Sister Abby when the wagon overturned in midstream. Amen. Amen. How about a word for Brother Z? <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad I was able to help Emmy and her grandma folks, but I'll tell you one thing, that that there river's the first thing Abby hasn't been able to stop by opening her mouth. Anyway, I, I think we should make camp right here and get everything out of the wagons, everything, folks, so they can dry out. <laughs> and tonight, tonight, couldn't we have one of them there good old square dances, Brother Walker? Well, uh... Now, what does our scout say about the Indians? Well, we're out of their territory now. They won't bother us. Then a square dance it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, but but dry out your wagons first. Get everything out of them wagons, folks. Everything. Everything. Uh, Brother Ezekiel, have you seen Jonathan? They love Joyce, sisters. I missed him all day. Jonathan? Oh, why, why, sure, Brother Walker. He's around all right. You want me to get him? Oh, no, no. Just as long as he's accounted for. Oh, sure, sure. He's around here. Yeah. Hurry, Grandma. The dance is going to start soon. Then stop squirming, child. Grandma, do you see Cecil like me in this dress? Will I be the prettiest one there, Grandma? Oh, I don't know about that, but you look just like... Oh, Emmy, your forehead's awful hot, child. You sure you feel all right? I, I'm just excited, Grandma. Oh, that river water was mighty cold and us half drowning in it. Oh, well, run along. About time you showed up, Yancey. Well, your plan worked. Now, let's start running down that gold. Wait until the dance can start. If you ain't too busy collecting medals. What for? You're a big hero, hmm? pulling the brat out of the river. Well, what'd you want tonight, a wake or a celebration? If it hadn't been for that, I'd let her drown. Oh, sure. Hello, Zeke. Well, now, what do you want? Look, Zeke, Grandma fixed up one of the dresses for me. And look, a gold ring. Oh, gee, gosh. Where did you get that? It's mine, honest. I was going to give it to you to wear... Uh, well, to where to the dance tonight? Emmy, you stole this ring, and stealing's bad. Every child knows that stealing is bad. Yeah, Emmy, Zeke's right. Only bad men steal. You mean like, like bad Bascom? Go on, Zeke. Tell her about bad Bascom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, well, how do you suppose he started out? By stealing. And what did it get him? Now he's got to hide out. What, sir? 
Well, because the Federals is after him, and if they caught him, they'd ventilate his carcass. Or else give him a permanent rope burn. What's a permanent rope burn? Oh, that's just something you pick up at a hanging. Sure wish I could see a hanging. What in tarnation do you want to see a hanging for? Why well, should the scouts tell him how sweet Toe Pete was made? Sure was exciting. First the posse pounced down on him. Pounced down? Like a mink on a setting hen. Then they took him to the high school suite. No, I, 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 I don't want to hear any more of that. And fixed him up with a hemp collar. Where did you learn that kind of talk? Don't you know what that is? How should I know? Well, a hemp collar is the same as a California cravat. Put it around his neck and left him swinging him like a tassel in the morning breeze. And set it in General Taylor. Someone of the South said. Now, 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 look here. I, I got a delicate stomach. Do, do you reckon I'll get to see a hanging someday? No. Not even a little bitty hanging? Like you know, maybe Bad Bascom? Brother Jonathan, it's this year morbid craving for excitement that's ruining all of our young folks nowadays. Yeah, but hanging Bad Bascom would be such a little bitty thing. You keep out of this. <laughs> Well, maybe Bascom is to be pitied because he's always got to associate with reptiles that are too cute talking for their own good. Must make him awful weary sometimes. Awful weary. Maybe I should feel sorry for him. No, no, you don't have to feel sorry for him. Just get that ring back to where you stole it from. Well, I didn't steal it. It's mine. For my marriage. Marriage? Now, there you go lying, see? First you steal and then you lie to cover it up. You're enough to ruin any man's ideals. You're just a lying, thieving little wart, and I don't want to have any more to do with you at all. You're... You're fooling, ain't you, Zeke? Oh, cut out that there crying. But I love you, Zeke. Oh, get away. Go on, get away from me. Go catch the measles or something. Now go on and get before I... I belt you in the snoot. Let's go, Brother Jonathan. Emmy. Why, Emmy, child, what's the matter? My ring, Grandma. Here, you take it back. Why, well, I thought you were going to wear it tonight. I, I changed my mind. I don't think I'll ever want it. Emmy, what's wrong, honey? Uh, I don't feel good, Grandma. I'm going for a wagon. I just feel off. Abby. Hey, you, Abby. You in the wagon? Where have you been? Well, Brother Walker just told me that Emmy ain't feeling so good. Oh, she's just getting to sleep, and don't you bother her. Well, there ain't no use of both of us missing the dancing, Abby. You go, and I'll kind of take care of Emmy, all right? Mm, well, all right, but call me, you hear, if she wants something. Yeah. Hello, Emmy. Emmy, I come to see you, honey. Oh, Why, you don't know it's me, you ain't even looked. That's no nice way to talk after I come to set by you. I thought you had more feelings for me than that. You said I was feeling. Well, maybe I was wrong, Emmy. I, I'm sorry. You were going to give me a belt and a snoot. Oh, that? I thought you knew that I was just testing you. What's testing? Seeing if you love me. Did you test him when he said you wanted me to test the measles? Oh, why, that's my number one test. Why, measles couldn't even land on you. You too wriggly. Would you have took the ring if Grandma would give it to you? Why should I? Because she likes you. Why do you play go all the time? Well, why, why do you poison gophers? Would you marry her? Now I know you're sick. Well, I may not always be around. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. You're getting on in years, Emmy. I kind of thought, though, that you was waiting for me. You wouldn't want a wart. Don't you know what I... that I meant just the opposite? What's the opposite of wart? Well, it's... it's, it's a dimple, of course, a, a little dimple. You mean I'm a dimple? Why, sure you are. Gee, you don't care for all women, do you, Zeke? Oh, of course not. Only one. I don't know why I should, though. You're just as homely as an old mud fence. Am I? Oh, I was, I was only fooling. It's no joke to be homely. But, Emmy, you, you're beautiful. You've got the cutest little pug nose. Grandma says that's where the sun kissed me. 
Didn't the sun ever kiss you, Zeke? Oh, this homely old mug of mine. Honey, I've been smacked by a rain cloud. Well, you're not homely. You're P-R-I-T-Y. Zeke, why don't you kiss me? Oh, no, go. I, I, well, all right. Here. Oh, my. Tell me again that you like me. I like you, Emmy. Honest, I do. I always know you did. Hey, not me. Who's there? Well, it sounds like Brother Jonathan. I'm coming, brother. You no, know, don't leave me. I'll be back, honey. I, I promise I will. I've been looking all over for you. Look, I got it. Three sacks of gold. Where'd you find it? Walker's wagon. Come on. No, no, I, I can't leave now. Emmy's sick. Are you crazy? Well, that gold ain't gonna run away. Take it easy. That kid's got you home tied. We'll never get another chance like this. Well, maybe that's the first time he was ever right, Yancey. Get the horses ready and give me the signal. Desert Owl. I'll see that you're ready. You see, honey, I'm, I'm back again. Mm-hmm. I had the most wonderful dream last night. And the dream you promised you'd never leave me. Did I, Emmy? Well... I'm going to make that dream come true. Honest, I am. Thank you. I, I'll go to sleep now. And I'll be right here, Emmy. I ain't ever... Oh, please, please, somebody shoot me. Brother Walker! Brother Walker! How? What happened? Who done it? Jonathan. He had a gold. I saw him with it. When I tried to stop him, he, he shot me and ran away. Don't try to talk with him. We'll get you to the wagon. I must talk. Ezekiel, I want you to guide my people through to Utah. I ask you this because I have to... No, be no, a... I'm Please no good. I... Give me a promise. Sure. I promise. Here's my hand on it. He can't take your hand, Reed. Jimmy. Brother Walker's dead. Hello, Jimmy. Emmy's sleeping. So's Abby. Come down from the wagon. I gotta talk to you. Sure. Emmy's fever's broke. She's nice and cool now. Well, what do you know? It's daylight. Yeah. And look. Yeah. Indian smoke signals. Yes. He's going back to the Indians. He steals the gold, murders poor old Walker, and now he's turning up the Indians to massacre this wagon train. Is that you, Bascom? It's one of the scouts. See those smoke signals? You told us the Indians wouldn't attack if we kept out of their territory. They'll fight all right when they've been filled full of lies. All right. It's my fault, but we can't stand here yapping. Stir up the camp. Put up the barricade. Come on. We've all got a good chance. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Bad Bastion. Right now, it's a pleasure to introduce our guest of the evening, the charming young actress, Miss Ann Todd. And let me congratulate you on your performance in Metro Golden Mayor's new Technicolor picture, Three Daring Daughters, in which you play one of the title roles. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. I found it great fun to play one of the unpredictable daughters of Jeanette McDonald. Lovely Jeanette McDonald. It's high time we heard her beautiful voice again. And what wonderful co-stars she has in the picture, including the famous world pianist, Jose Iturbe. A thrill for music lovers. Jeanette sings and Jose plays. And Jane Powell adds her enchanting voice to the talent array. I should say the feminine cast has unusual beauty and charm. Well, certainly Jeanette McDonald and Jane Powell are two of Hollywood's loveliest stars. And both of them so appealing in Technicolor. Don't you agree, John Kennedy? Yes. Technicolor shows off their beauty to great advantage in MGM's Three Daring Daughters, especially those famous Lux complexions. That's right, Mr. Kennedy. No wonder Lux soap is a must in studio dressing rooms. Complexions have to be right for camera close-ups, you know. That's why Jeanette McDonald and Jane Powell and so many other famous stars are Lux enthusiasts. It's as fine a complexion soap as money can buy. I can testify to that, Mr. Kennedy. 
Lux Soap is a beauty aid any girl can depend on. Thank you, Miss Ann Todd. I'm sure any woman who tries daily facials with fragrant white Lux Toilet Soap will agree it's a beauty care that works. Tests by skin specialists proved actually three out of four complexions became softer, smoother, in a short time with Lux Soap Care. Why not see what the beauty soap of the stars can do for your skin? We return you now to William Keeley. Be sure to join us after our final curtain for a brief chat with tonight's star. And the important news about the winners of Lever's Big Fur Contest. Plus news of how you, too, may be a winner. Here's our third act of Bad Bastion, starring Wallace Beery in the title role and Margaret O'Brien as Emmy. All day, the little wagon train is huddled in the valley, while from mountain peaks on every side, smoke signals spell the ominous warning that the Indians are gathering to attack. But the immigrants won't be caught unprepared. Bad Bastion has pledged his word to bring the wagon train safely into Utah. And for the first time in his life, he intends to keep his promise. Well, we're safe for a while, Jimmy. It'll soon be dark. Those Indians won't attack at night. We don't stand a chance. Sure we do. We've got our barricades built. We've got guns with water. I don't mean that. I mean the people trust you. They're relying on you. And if you ask me, you and Yancey are probably engineering this together. I could kill you for saying that. No, I don't know as I blame you for thinking that, Jimmy, but maybe by this time tomorrow you'll know different. I'm sorry. Forget it. This year's all Yancey's doings. He's lived with them engines. They believe what he tells them. He's got a good reason to want us all killed. We can expect them along about dawn. I'm going to leave you, Baskin. There are troops at Fort Bonneville. There's a chance I can get through to them. Through those engine lines? Oh, you ain't got a chance in a million. I'll try anyway. You ain't gone nowhere. We need you here. I'm not taking orders from you, Bascom. Not anymore. All right, son. Go on. Go ahead, then. You see, I'd like to square up my conscience, too. Well, good luck. Thanks, Jimmy. Any message for Dora? Dora? No. There'll be time for that if I get back. Then I can... I'm sorry, Jimmy. If anybody can get through to Fort Bonneville, it's me. I guess you won't mind if I borrow your horse. Is that you? Mm, yeah, Emmy, why ain't you in that there wagon? Why well, not sick anymore, Zeke? I've been looking for you. Yeah, don't talk so loud. You going somewhere, Zeke? Yeah, yeah, but I'll, I'll be back, Emmy. Going to ride you there, Mindy and Zeke? Well, kind of, but you don't have to worry, Nani. I won't, Zeke. There's only a couple of thousands of them, ain't there? Yeah, yeah, but they got guns. I wouldn't worry if there were ten times that many. Well, just don't you go wishing any more on me than you have to. Oh, Pooh, you're just trying to scare me. I bet you could clean them out with your bare hands. Either. Well, maybe, but I'll, uh, I'll kind of take my guns in long just in case. Now, you be a good girl, you hear? Goodbye, Zeke. Goodbye, honey. Oh, tell Jimmy he's in charge till I get back. Where is he? Well, he's back there, honey, taking a little nap. Now, you mind your fan while you're here. Getting light, Jimmy. They'll be coming any minute now. Yeah. All the men at their post? Yeah, I just checked. You women and kids, get to the shelter now and stay there. Come on, come on, Jimmy. Look. Indian. No, it's a horse. No rider, just a horse. That's my horse. We went for help on that horse. Then they got him. The Indians got feet. No, they never had feet. Don't worry, Grandma. He said he'd come back and he will. Mason, get to the rest of the men. Tell them they'd better not expect any help. All we can do now is... Here they come. Hold your fire! Wait till they're closer! Hold your fire! Well, mister, what do you want? There's a wagon train under attack. Green River Valley. Call out the soldiers. Well, I'd sure like to help you, mister, but that's up to the colonel. Hey, you're bleeding. No, never mind that. I'm telling you, there ain't a minute to spare. I had to ride 20 miles out of the way to get here. Them cavalry can make it back in an hour. Well, maybe they can, but I ain't got the authority. Then you get the colonel. Sorry, mister. I ain't got that authority either. The colonel's asleep. He's got an awful temper. So have I got an awful temper. There's probably a massacre going on there right now, but unless you get the colonel, I'm going to start one of my own. I don't think there'll be any need of that. 
Colonel Fisher, sir. The Indians are jumping our wagon train, sir. You got troops here, Colonel. What, what have I got to do? Can you with... lead us back. Sure, I can. Corporal, sound full assembly. Yes, sir. What's going on, Colonel? Indian raid, Mr. Fulton. Mr. Fulton. Well, how do you do, sir? Mr. Smith, isn't it? Yes, sir. Ezekiel Smith. You mind if I ride along, Colonel? Come along then, Fulton. Go extra horses, Sergeant. All right. You, uh, you're wounded, Mr. Smith? My arm? Yeah, taint nothing. I wrapped it up with my neckerchief. Yes. Yes, so I see. Come along, Mr. Smith. Later on, maybe, you can tell me how you got that scar on your neck. Oh. Sure. Yes, sir. I'm out of ammunition. More ammunition. Oh, no. Make every shot count. Make every shot count. They're pulling out that wagon. They're going to break through. Then beat the horses into that opening. Soldiers. Soldiers. Beat the through. I guess I haven't had a chance till now to thank you, Colonel. We were just about done for when you got here. I'll save your thanks, son. Just turn a couple of your wagons over to us. We'll send your wounded down to Fort Bonneville. Yes, sir. Well, Fulton, what's the matter? You haven't seen that Smith fellow, have you, Colonel? Not since the fighting. Why? Because he's disappeared, that's why. Well, just... Just temporarily, Mr. Fulton, but I'm... I'm back now. Help that man, Sergeant. He's about to keel over. Oh, no, I'm... I'm all right, I... Just had a little argument with Mr. Yancey. Yancey? I thought he escaped. If you want him, you'll find him up behind those rocks there. No hurry. He won't be running away. About that scar on your neck, Mr. Smith. It's a rope burn, Mr. Fulton. That's what I thought. I'm taking you in, Bascom. Sure. But those folks over there, will you let me talk to them just a minute and say goodbye? And then there's a little kid I ain't... I ain't had a chance. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, folks, I I don't know much how to make no speech, but I want to tell you that I, I, I won't be seeing you for a few days. I got to help Mr. Fulton there to identify this fellow they got back in Fort Bonneville. They think he's bad Bascom. Yeah. So I'll be joining you after a while, providing the welcome mat is still out for me. And Jimmy, I, I promised Brother Walker that I'd see that this year wagon train got through to Utah. And I know that you'll see that I don't let him down, won't you? I'll do anything you say, Zeke. Sure. Well, then, well, <laughs> goodbye, everybody. I'll, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Emmy, uh, ain't you going to say goodbye to me? Not in front of everybody, Zeke. But Mr. Fulton, he's, he's in a big hurry, Emmy. Not that much of a hurry, Mr. Smith. We can talk better over there, Zeke. Sure, honey. Why are you going away? Well, I... I guess maybe because it'll make me appreciate you all the more when I come back. And maybe I can get you them uh, pretty presents I was telling you all about. Let's see if I got anything I can give you for a souvenir. No. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Emmy. I... Oh, wait. Here's an old suspender button. Would you give it to me, Zeke? Why? Because it's yours. Well, if you ain't loco. Zeke, you ain't coming back, are you? Why, what makes you talk like that? You ain't, Zeke. I know it. I ain't ever going to see you anymore. Ain't nobody could be so happy without doing something for us. All I could do is pray. Did you pray for me? Every night. God bless Zeke and Grandma. Well, you know that ain't right, honey. Put me first. Maybe tonight you'll, you'll say a little prayer for Grandma and Zeke, will you? Now kiss me goodbye, Emmy. Zeke, I'm still going to put you first. Let's go, Mr. Fulton. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Good luck. Zeke, Zeke. Yes, honey. And I'll always L-O-B-E you. Goodbye, G-A-R-L-I-N. L-I-N-G. All right, I-N-G. I was just testing you, honey.
curtain falls on Bad Bascom, and the spotlight falls now on tonight's stars, who return to the footlights in response to your applause. Wallace Beery and Margaret O'Brien. No wonder you two are among the Lux Radio Theater's favorite performers. Well, Bill, speaking of performances, Margaret gave one of the best I've ever heard a week ago. So I understand, when she helped greet the Freedom Train on its arrival in Los Angeles. You made a speech, Margaret. Yes, but it wasn't my own speech, Mr. Keeley. It was Mr. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. You would have made Abe Lincoln proud. But wasn't it strange to be giving Lincoln's Gettysburg Address on Washington's birthday? Oh, I think the Gettysburg Address is good for any day. A very good answer, Margaret. How did you like the Freedom Train? Oh, it's wonderful, Mr. Keeley. Every boy and girl should see it. Yeah, and their parents, too. Are you going to write a piece uh, about it for your syndicated column? Yes, I've got one already. Would you read my newspaper column, Mr. Barry? Oh, sure, I say I do. I'll tell you something, Margaret. It's a lot easier to read than Walter Lipton. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever mention Lux Soap in your column, Margaret? No, I haven't yet, but I do use Lux every single day because I like it so. A very wise young lady. Wally, I understand that you become something of a city slicker in your next Metro Golden Mayor picture, Alias a Gentleman. Yeah, yeah, they've even got me in white tie and tails, Bill. <laughs> it's about time after all the old clothes I've been wearing on the screen. What's Lux doing next week, Mr. Keeley? Well, a few weeks ago, a bright new star was introduced to the American screen. An actress proclaimed to be the sensation of the year. You and millions of fans will know her simply as Valley. V-A-L-L-I. The Lux Radio Theater is proud to present her, co-starred with one of our all-time favorites, Joseph Cotton, in David O. Selznick's gripping drama, Spellbound. A cast and play I know our audience will thrill to. Well, it sounds like a mighty exciting evening, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night and many, many thanks. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Spellbound with Joseph Cotton and Valley. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies, I've just put in a long-distance call to the winner of the grand prize for the second week of Lever Brothers' sensational fur contest. And while we're waiting for the call to come through, we want to remind our listeners that there's still time to get into the fifth and last contest. Last chance to win a magnificent $3,000 mink coat. Or one of the three second grand prizes, luxurious fur coats worth $1,000 apiece. Then there are fur jackets, fur scarves, and 250 cash prizes. 329 splendid prizes in all. You can take your prize in cash if you prefer, but hurry. Hurry and get your entry in now. Here's all you do. On entry blank available from your dealer or any piece of paper, write 25 words or less telling why you like any of six famous lever products. Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes, Life Boy, Rinso, Swan, or Spry. You can send in as many letters as you wish. Just be sure to enclose with each one a box top or wrapper from any one of these six products. Print your name and address on your letter, together with the name and address of your dealer. Mail your letter, together with box top or wrapper, to Lever, L-E-V-E-R, Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York City. Contest subject to complete rules on entry blanks at your dealer. This fifth and last contest closes, finally, Sunday, March 14th. Entries must be postmarked before midnight. Oh, uh, there's our phone call. Hello? Uh... You say you're ready with the, the uh, Piqua call operator? Hello, is this Mrs. Hinch of Piqua, Ohio? Mrs. Scott J. Hinch of 534 Riverside Drive? Uh, this is John Kennedy speaking from the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood, California, Mrs. Hinch. I have the pleasure to tell you that you've won the grand prize in Lever's Big Fur Contest. And that's right, a $3,000 mink coat, any style you like. Or you can have the cash if you prefer. <laughs> Are you excited? I can certainly appreciate how you feel, Mrs. Hinch. Congratulations. Uh, goodbye. And now, Libby, the winners of the three second prizes. A luxurious fur coat worth $1,000, all the cash, goes to Mrs. Clarence Egan, 2610 First Avenue North, Leeds, Alabama. Mrs. Helena Walker Lyman, 8809 Southwest Bertha Beaverton Highway, Beaverton, Oregon. And Mrs. George Meslin, 7364 Maryland Avenue, 
University City 5, Missouri. Winners of the remaining 325 prizes will be notified by mail. And ladies, don't delay. Send in your entries right away. You, too, may win one of these beautiful fur coats. Remember, Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York City. You hear that, ladies? It's your butcher getting the cash he owes you for that used kitchen fat you've just brought in. You can still get good hard cash for every pound you know. The worldwide shortage of fats and oils continues. And every drop you save in your own kitchen helps. Even those fats you reuse for cooking can be salvaged. So keep on saving every drop of used kitchen fat. The need is still great. Wallace Beery and Margaret O'Brien appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of The Bride Goes Wild, starring Van Johnson and June Allison. Join us again next Monday night to hear Spellbound with Joseph Cotton and Valley. Pepsodent won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families throughout America compared new Pepsodent toothpaste with the brands they'd been using at home. By an overwhelming average of three to one, they preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodent toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Spellbound with Joseph Cotton and Valley. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>